Hey, 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 Tav for another Out of This World story from our space. I think hotels should start having disclaimers that say, your spouse may be in here totally annihilating your wedding vows. Hotel rooms don't just scream, cheer me and bed bug ridden anymore. You can quite literally hear the infidelity through the walls. Today on our space, check-in time is 11 a.m. and we offer a complimentary continental breakfast of tea spilling and infidelity. Up first, one last fling before the ring. Wife cheated a bachelorette party. Fake friend exposed her. My, male 36, wife, female 34, cheated on me back in 2019. I was blindsided and I wanted to share because I was told my reaction was a little unhealthy. After I was played like some kind of fool, I wanted to understand why some women were so untrustworthy. My wife had showed me she had no loyalty, even though I did what I needed to keep her happy. Me and my wife got married six years ago, and we run a good place from the beginning. I worked handling the accounts at my company, and she was an STNA nurse when I met her. We rented a nice house and wasn't in any real debt. We were good at managing our money, so spending wasn't a problem. We communicated easily, worked good as a team, and getting visible at night was easy because she was just gorgeous and kept her looks up always. Our family had got along good, and me and her brother, Jacob, was practically best friends. He worked as a custodian at the hospital she worked at, thanks to their mom, and we always looked out for her little brother. My wife was clearly an independent woman, as she could always think for herself. She always had a sense of confidence and demanded respect from me and Jacob. We didn't have kids, but I felt like if we did, she would be a good inspiration. But the problem with her was that she had toxic friends around her. The way they talked about each other made me feel like they were more like rivals than anything. They would talk about each other all week, but party together and claim they were sisters. Not only that, they would get into terrible arguments, especially when they were drunk. I can't count how many times they had a falling out with each other. Then the next week, they would go out on a girl's trip to be on vacation. I was told the girls secretly be in competition with each other, so I thought it was just typical. It could be annoying, but I just took the good for the bad. I just thought it was normal between the five of them. The affair happened when her friend, Erica, was about to get married. Before the marriage, it's normal to have their wild party, so my wife and her friends left that night to throw Erica the party they planned at the hotel. I knew they were going to be out all night, so I didn't bother waiting up for her. A couple of days after the wedding, I was getting ready to hop in the shower that night when I heard my phone ringing in the bedroom. At the time, I wasn't sure if that's what I heard, so I just hopped in the shower. When I came out of the shower, I saw I had six missed calls, and they were from the same number. This was weird to me, so I didn't call the person back since I didn't know who this person was. When I was in my living room, the number called again, and even though I didn't know the number, I decided to pick up. When I answered, nobody answered me back at first, and all I could hear was a girl talking to a guy in the background. I her saying, hello, three times, I just hung up. After that, they called me again and I immediately picked up the phone. This time the girl answered me back and realized it was one of my wife's friends. I asked her, friend, let's just call her Jasmine, why she was calling me. She immediately started calling my wife names and said she cheated on me at the party. This had put a real fear in me, but I still said she didn't know what she was talking about. She said she did know, and that she had recorded it as proof to show me. I asked her what she was talking about, and she told me everything. She said at Erica's party, they had hired some guys to come there and dance for everybody. Since my wife was extra friendly to one of the guys, he kept coming back to her, and he had crossed the line with her. I couldn't believe what I was hearing, but at the same time, I knew this kind of thing wasn't uncommon. After hearing me not say anything for a minute, Jasmine said if I wanted the evidence, she would send it to my phone. I told her send it to me, and she said hang up while she got ready to send it. After about five minutes, she sent me four video files, and when I looked at them, I had collapsed on my couch seeing the proof. I called Jasmine back, and she asked me did I get it, and while being choked up, I said I did get it. She started calling my wife names again and told me she was sorry for how she acted. I asked her why she would do this to somebody she claimed was her sister, and she never gave me a direct answer. She just said my wife and her friends were a bunch of hypocrites and called them fake. I asked how did she get my number, and she reminded me my wife called her from my phone asking directions for her dinner party she had at a restaurant. She said she was done being their friend, and said that Erica was doing bad things too. Jasmine said talk to my wife about it, and I told her she was at another friend's house at the time, but I definitely was. After hanging up, I was falling to pieces. I know I had to confront her. There was four full videos of my wife being with another guy. But after that, I didn't know what my life would be like and how she could do this to me. I never trusted these parties, but I didn't think it would happen to me. I don't even get invited to these things. When my wife got home, I confronted her as soon as she walked in the door. 
I asked her how she was doing and said she was tired but fine. I told her I never asked her how Erica's party was and did she have fun. She seemed caught off guard a little, but said it was fine. I told her Jasmine said she had a fun time and that she even recorded her to show me later. She looked spooked and asked me what I was talking about, and I showed her the videos of her and the guy getting it on that night. First her jaw dropped, then she screamed at what she saw. She begged me not to leave her and said Jasmine was doing this because my wife had replaced her with somebody else to be one of Erica's bridesmaids. She said her and Erica got into a big argument about it with her and Erica uninvited her from the ceremony. When I heard this, I could kind of see why Jasmine was mad, but not to go this far though. It didn't matter to me because I told her I was getting a divorce and that's exactly why I did. To the whole divorce, both of our families wanted us to reconcile. I was told even though she shouldn't have done it, it was a special night for them and I wasn't supposed to have known. I told them that was supposed to be for the bride and even if she was, I wouldn't stay with her. I couldn't believe my wife was doing this with this guy, especially in public. After finally getting divorced, I still couldn't leave the situation alone. I got in touch with other guys that dance and asked them about getting women. I even asked women. The women said they don't, but no girls who did it for extra money. The guys I asked said they get girls all the time, especially the bride. One guy said when he started, it wasn't like that at first, but the women started wanting it and it just became normal. When I told my friends this, they said it was unhealthy and I should stop talking to them. I don't know. I guess it was just how I was handling it at the time, but I don't see anything wrong with it. I just couldn't get those videos out of my head. It's as when the guy knew she was being secretly recorded. Right now, my ex-wife lives in her own apartment close to her job somewhere. I used to see her family once in a while, and they still asked me to forgive her because of the circumstance, but I can't do it. I hate to admit it, but Jasper was right when she said my ex-wife was a fake friend. But apparently her love was fake too. Now she don't regret it, I hear. Thank you for reading through all of this, and please continue to stay genuine. Let's let the community react before we move on. Adam Stevenson 003 says, You did exactly what you needed to do. The OP replies, Thanks, my friend. Thought it seemed a little obsessive though to talk to the male dancers, but I guess I was kind of looking for answers. Rios is dying says, Damn, just read your story and honestly good for you, but seriously man, you used to speak with therapists, sound like it's still eating you. Admirable Ad801 says, The downplaying by your wife and the family is mind-blowing. Just take your wife giving a BJ in your stride. On the chin. Move on. You did the right thing, bro. You're a good man. Never lower your standards. The back she said to you, the girl did it because she was removed as bridesmaid. It's as if this was nothing. If you stayed, you would have doubted everything from there onward. There's a difference between being the life of the party and being a self-absorbed schmuck. Just think if you stayed, you would have stood next to the bed after she delivered your first child. Your first thought would be, who your daddy? I can understand your way of grieving. If something bothers me, I pry it open. The only thing that never made sense and I could never understand is how you can get married. Say your vows, then go and cheat. Whether it's an inch or all in, it's there and it's a choice where the betrayed spouse has no faculty of choice, nor is him or her considered. I like to read these threads where you get the betrayed spouse with conviction enough to say no. Glad you value yourself to walk away. She can now give BJs at all her friend's bridal showers. One more thought. Do you think your ex-wife gave a BJ to all the strippers at her bridal shower? She guaranteed did that. Your whole marriage was to a self-centered idiot. When you're on your own, away from your significant other, that what you default to. That shows your character. Be glad you never had kids. If you had, you would have had to do DNA testing. Good luck, bro. Somebody thinking of you, ex-wife bridal shower seven years ago, puts everything into perspective. The girl who told you should get a big bunch of flowers. She saved you from a bad marriage. I don't think you did anything wrong by seeking out answers, OP. I think it's a very natural thing to try to make sense of things and understand what had happened or where it went wrong. Moreover, you did nothing wrong and you didn't deserve any of this. If she was that flaky, unstable and two-faced with her friends that she called sisters, there's no saying what she's capable of doing against her own husband. And to say that it was a special night, there's never any circumstance which excuses infidelity. I don't understand how people can live with themselves after hiding things like that from the one they love. I don't want to make any assumptions, but I will. By the sound of it, your wife sounds like she's got a huge ego and is constantly looking to feed it. She may have looked at herself as untouchable to consequences. Like maybe she did this with some nobody to prove to herself that she still got it. Either way, she doesn't have it, and you definitely deserve much better than her. Do you think special occasions like bachelorette or bachelor parties give you a hall pass to cheat? Spill your dirty secrets in the comments below. Up next... Viva Las Vegas, 
turns out, what happens in Vegas doesn't always stay in Vegas. Not a business trip. I have posted this before and deleted it. Things have changed since my original post. This all started a year ago in March of 2021. My wife got promoted and went on her first business trip. The company has an office in Las Vegas. Her trip was with the owner of the company and a few other people. On the very last night of the trip is when things got weirded. It was around 11 p.m. Las Vegas time and she finally called to say she was going to bed. My gut was telling me something was up because she never called to tell her kids goodnight, which is not normal. I told her to call me back when she was all ready for bed and actually in bed. When she called me about 15 minutes later, I decided to get all cutesy and flip the phone to video chat. The second I did that, I realized she was not going to bed. She still had her hair all down, makeup on, etc. I asked her if she was really going to bed. She pretended to be offended and she hung up on me. The next morning, she pretended like nothing had happened. She came home that same day as well. The following week, my goat was on fire. I knew something was up, but hadn't made any moves to verify my suspicions. A week later, I woke up and decided to go through her phone. Sure enough, I scrolled back to the night she hung up on me, and she had deleted texts from him asking where she was after she hung up on me. Two hours later, he texts her and says, Your phone. She said, You have no idea. I immediately lost my mind and approached her about the texts, why she was deleting them, etc. She denied anything happened. The issue was they had planned another trip down there the following week to clear out matters that were at the office down there. I object to that and said she was not going. Her argument was nothing happened between them. She was sorry for lying, but needed to go for her job. She was going, and there wasn't much to do about it. Yes, I became a doormat in this moment. Fast forward to the day she was leaving for the second trip, they started up again with their texts. When I went through the her phone, I copied all the saved passwords and an app she has so I could see her texts and her Verizon account. He messaged her and said, I'm dying to hear how you pulled this trip off. She responds, I'm on my best behavior, that's how. He then says to her, I'm curious to see what your best behavior looks like. She responds and says, I told you if I wear the pants. Again, I lost my mind and told her to have fun on her trip and I was out. Fast forward to this month. We have been attempting to reconcile over the last year. In March of this year, she took a polygraph and passed. All questions were in regards to her having any type of sexual contact with it. Two weeks after the polygraph, she went on another business trip with this man. This time, I had a buddy who works in the intel industry with me follow her. The very first night there, she is semi-drunk after going out to dinner with him and a few other business associates. My buddy gets on the elevator and follows them to their room. She says to him prior entering her room, I'm going to call my husband, then be knocking on your door. So my buddy waited outside the door for her to come out. This is when we realized they had conjoined suites in the Encore Towers. I immediately called her and asked where his room was. She finally admitted it was attached to hers and would change her room the following day. From there I did not talk to her very much the following day. I was furious. The following night, my buddy again follows them up to the room at the end of the night. She is drunk again. Says, as she is entering her room, I will have my titties out in two minutes for free. I completely lost it this time. I called her and said I would pack her stuff for her. I then proceeded to call him and advised him to call his wife to let her know what was going down and that I would be calling her in the morning. Of course, my wife is saying nothing happened. My assumptions are opposite. As of right now, she's taking another polygraph to prove she did nothing. My mind is in this weird, numb state of not really caring about anything. The community has some thoughts on this. Why don't we learn chimes in first? Posts like this one bring back the memories of believing my wife was cheating on me, but not having solid proof. The months of that, until I found out for certain, were torturous, devastating. Harder, I think, than the actual revelation. I must have some level of PTSD because I'm sitting here shaking and finding it hard to catch my breath. And for me, all that happened 17 years ago. My heart goes out to you, brother. No you have to go through what you're going through. Edit. As a part of my bachelor's degree, I wrote a paper which was the result of a year of secondary research. The paper was about the science behind the detection of deception. So, of course, some of the paper was devoted to the polygraph. You should know that the very best polygraph operators do about as well as flipping a coin on their detection of a lying subject. Don't waste your money on a polygraph examination, but for other ways to find the truth. The OP replies, Yes, I have no solid proof. It all looks really bad and she admits to saying stupid things. She also wants to go to therapy and all that, but even if nothing physical happened, the lying and deception are not a marriage therapy issue. Enforcement X adds on, You're correct. 
a normal, well-adjusted person who found themselves in this situation the first time and who spent the last year reconciling would go out of their way to not resume the exact same behaviors that landed them in this mess in the first place. And to be clear, adults don't get adjoining rooms, get drunk together, talk about having titties out, and not be screwing each other. No matter how much she denies it, it's just not the logical scenario. The next comment comes from Blade982. I'm sorry, but what are you doing? You know she's cheating. She knows she's cheating. He knows she's cheating. They've mocked you behind your back. And you're just letting them continue because you don't have evidence? What kind of evidence will actually cause you to take action? Because there's been lots. You seem unwilling to accept it. And the polygraphs? Worthless. No one is this eager to take them unless they know they'll pass them. And she's not passing them because he's honest. I feel like you're totally being played here, OP. And I think sometimes we have to really lay it all out on the table and offer that ultimatum until someone actually gets it. It's going to hurt, but you need to crack the whip or else she's going to continue on this way for God knows how long until you actually get evidence. But by then, you're going to be miserable and wishing you had done something sooner. Always follow your gut. Nobody says what she's saying and isn't cheating. Kick her out and tell her exactly where to go. And all you people listening, why don't you repent your sin from Vegas in the comments below. Thank you for joining us today on our space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We hate for you to miss it. Also, please let us know what you thought of today's content. We love hearing from you. Until next time.